Hello and welcome to a new series where I explore modelling in Maya. Although, to be fair, most of the techniques I will be demonstrating will be easily transferable to other applications. Just like with my rigging in Maya series, the plan is to take things back to basics as I go through each element separately, so you get a clearer understanding of the whole modelling process. Once the fundamentals have been covered, I will then walk you through the process of building a base mesh which we will then turn into a fully fledged character, one which we will then use as the basis for some future rigging courses. For this series I will be focusing purely on polygons, as that's what we will be mainly using. So for now I won't be covering NURBS or voxels. So quick question, how would you like to help support the future of this channel and keep these videos free for everyone? Well there are a few options. One would be to simply treat me to a coffee at my coffee page as a quick and easy thank you. You can also download something from the Ant CGI store, or alternatively, one of my other online stores like QBrush and Gumroad. However, for as little as 99p a month, you could join the Ant CGI club. There are a few ways you can join. You could head over to my Patreon or coffee pages, or alternatively, simply hit that join button below this video. In short, the more support I get, the more time I can dedicate to creating more high quality content just for you. To get more information on how you can help, follow the link on the screen or in the description below. Ok, enough waffle, let's get on with the video. I thought we would start by going over some of the terms associated with polygon modelling. These will be cropping up all the way through the course, so it makes sense to cover them now so you know what I will be referring to later. Here we have a polygon, also known as a triangle or even a tri, and this is constructed from several elements. We have vertices, which are the points at each corner. These are connected by edges, and the main area which sits inside these is a polygon or a face. Here we have a quadrilateral polygon, or a quad for short. And this is made up of four vertices and four edges. The inside looks like it's a single face, but it is in fact made up of two triangles which are merged. I can quickly triangulate it again, which converts it back to triangles, and we can see them both now. And to change it back to a quad, I can simply select the middle edge and delete it. So those are the standard triangle and quad shapes, but there is another shape and that's known as an n-gon. This is an area made up from more than four vertices and edges which isn't triangulated. There are a number of reasons why triangles, quads and n-gons should or shouldn't be used in your models. In general, a quad based model is preferred as it leads itself to a better distribution of polygons and edges which can make the model deform in a much more natural and predictable way. Triangles can sometimes be unavoidable, especially when working on a real time model. Just try to keep them to a minimum. When it comes to n-gons, these should generally be avoided as they can result in bad deformation and in some cases pinching and artefacts on the surface of the model. Another element to try and avoid are T-vertices. This is an area where the edge forms a T-shape and is often formed from three quads, with one of the vertices only being connected to three edges, something like this. Again, these can sometimes be unavoidable, especially when working on a subdivision surface model, as we will be. What you can do though is be clever about their placement so you can minimise the impacts they have on the model's surface and the way it deforms. Now don't worry, we will go over all this in more detail as we build our character. So these are the fundamental terms involved when modelling, but as your model expands and the polygon count rises, there are more terms that arise. Here we have a simple sphere. And this is a basic shape which all modelling packages can create for you. This along with a cube, cylinder and many other shapes are known as primitives. This is primarily made up of lots of quads, with triangles used at the top and the bottom. 
What we can also see are edge loops and edge rings. If I right click on the sphere to bring up the marking menu and select edges, we can switch to edge editing mode. I can now double click on one to quickly select an edge loop. And as you can see, this is a selection of connected edges. I can do this vertically too. If I instead select a single edge and then holding shift, double click on the edge opposite it, I select the edge ring. And this is a series of edges which are not directly connected, but share a face or polygon. We can also do something similar with faces and vertices, holding shift to quickly select the desired loop. If we look at the top of the sphere, we have a series of triangles. What you can also see is that we have a single vertex in the middle with multiple edges connected to it. This is known as a pole and is simply a vertex which has three, five or more edges connected to it. Again, these can be unavoidable in your models, but can come in useful when redirecting edge loops, as you will see later in the workshop. So those are the main terms we will be using over the duration of the course. I'm sure more will come up as we work, but these will be the ones used most frequently. One other term you will hear me use a lot will be topology, and this is very important when it comes to your models. Topology simply refers to the way the model has been constructed with regards to its edge flow and density. You will hear me talk about clean topology a lot, and that's because it's so important not only aesthetically, but it will also help dictate how the model will render and deform. But again, we will talk more about this throughout the course. Let's now look at surface normals. Each model has a combination of both face and vertex normals, and these help to dictate how the light will fall across its surface. Here we have a cylinder, and you will notice that it looks quite angular, but not only that, one side is darker than the other. As we rotate it, one side is lit on the outside and the other on the inside. If we open the display polygons menu and display its face normals, thin green lines appear. And what these are doing is showing us which way each of the faces normals are pointing. So as you can see, they are pointing out here. So the outside of the model is lit whereas the normals here are pointing in towards the center. So these faces are being lit on the opposite side. We can quickly fix this first by selecting one of the faces and then hold shift and right click to bring up the marking menu and then go to face normals, conform normal. So now they are all pointing the same way and are being lit from the outside. But what if we don't want this cylinder to look as angular as it does? Well, we need to change the way the normals are pointing so it's instead smooth shaded rather than flat shaded like it is now. If we display the vertex normals too, you can see we now get two lines per vertex and these currently point in the same direction as the face they are connected to. So what is happening is the surface's lighting is being dictated by the direction of the normals so we are ending up with something like this, with the normals pointing directly out from each face, so the surface appears flat, and the edges have a more angular appearance. If we wanted to change this to soften the surface, we would need to adjust the angle of the vertex normals. So if I hold shift and right click to bring up the marking menu again, I can simply go to soften harden edges, and then soften the edges. You see, the vertex normals have changed and are now averaged out, so they are angled between each face normal rather than following the same direction. So the light is now being distributed evenly between each normal, like this. And it's because of that we end up with a softer looking model. It's important to keep surface normals in mind as you model, because there may be times when you are mirroring a model or combining geometry when one section's normals become inverted. So having a good idea of what normals are can help you to solve possible issues further down the line. Another element associated with a model are its UVs. 
and we may not be dealing with these directly in this first part of the series, but they are still worth discussing. UVs exist alongside each vertex and are used as a map to tell each point where it should lie on a texture page. Think of it like a present or a gift that's been wrapped. The wrapping paper is the texture page and the gift is the model. With the UVs, you are telling us how the wrapping paper should be applied across the gift surface as it's wrapped. If I open the UV editor, you will see a basic default texture is applied to the model, which is used to help guide us as we adjust the UV map. In the editor, you can see the current UV layout, and all primitive objects are created with a basic UV map to get you started. We can adjust the UVs, which are the green points here, and scale them so the squares in the temporary texture map are more in proportion to make sure when the texture is applied, it is even and not distorted. Now you know more about what polygons are and some of the terminology behind them, let's look at some of the ways people approach using them to build their models. For this and future courses, we will be using a mixture of some of these techniques. One of my favourite ways to model is box modelling, and we will be using this approach throughout this course. Traditionally, this method begins with a simple cube, which is then extruded and divided to add more detail. I prefer to expand upon this and use more primitives, like cylinders and spheres, as I start to work on a new character or creature, as you will see. Subdivision surfaces or subDs are a quick way to change your model so it appears to be smoother than it actually is, all while retaining the base topology. In effect, it's like applying a smooth operation to your model, which would quadruple the polygon count and make the model more difficult to work with. Applying subdivision surfaces to a model gives you the same result, but you can still work on the lower resolution version of the model, often known as a proxy model. This approach is adopted by many film and visual effects companies because it's a lot more economical. One of the more interactive and common ways to quickly create a high detailed model is to digitally sculpt it. This approach gives you a virtual lump of clay, often formed from polygons or voxels, which you can shape and mould without worrying about polygon counts, which can be quite liberating. This high resolution virtual model can then be used as a base for a lower resolution model, which can then be used in visual effects and game development. Retopology is often used after the artist has created a model using a sculpting application or has been given a mesh which has been scanned and imported. It's the process of rebuilding the model while drastically reducing its polygon count, while also retaining the major shapes and details but also improving the topology so it's more economical and is better suited for animation. The finer details from the original model can then be reapplied in the form of a displacement or normal map so you get the same result but in a much cheaper package. OK, so that's a quick overview of polygons, the terminology used with them and some approaches to building models. With the basics covered, it's time to dive in and start to build something. So in the next video, we will begin working on our base mesh. OK, that's the first video in the Modelling in Maya series over. Thanks for watching right to the end and make sure you also check out some of the other free videos and courses I have. You can find links to all these on the screen now and in the description below. Remember, to help support future content and keep these videos free, visit the Ant CGI store or join the Ant CGI club. Alternatively, if you would just like to show your appreciation for these videos, why not treat me to a coffee at my coffee page? Again, the link is on the screen and in the description below. Thanks again for watching, this is AntCGI signing off and I will see you on the next one.